look at the, if you look at, for example, the monotheistic practices like uh, Islam, maybe sometimes Judaism, the written word has power, but we don't really have that culture of writing. So for as more than written word, the spoken power has word, uh, power. Um, and so just merely writing it doesn't really mean anything. And so, but that being said, it means that every word that is spoken can um, be powerful or can be destructive. Um, and so before you talk about certain things, you must ah. you must pray or you must ask, please give me the permission to speak about strong things. Uh, and that's why there are some things about certain spirits that you will not be able to tell other people who are not initiated. Or there are certain words you don't say mm -hmm because you don't want to br bring any negativity upon that person's life. Or, um, but the more and more you practice, you'll see how, pow how much power the, um, we say the tongue holds, the tongue has power, mm -hmm. more than the word itself. Is it more about like the understanding? Like let's say you're explaining a concept to me and if I'm not at a spiritual level, certain spiritual level, mm -hmm. I would not be able to understand. It sometimes it's understanding. Mm -hmm. There are certain things I cannot tell you now because you may not conceptually understand. That's that is one thing. Mm -hmm. But that is also separate from not be, me be, not telling you something because of the force of what I'm telling you is. Mm -hmm. Because spirits are not like, like I said, spirits are like invisible human beings. You just can't see them. And so when you work with a spirit, um, it becomes your, your partner. Mm -hmm. I'm in the physical world doing the physical work. And then he or she or it is in the spiritual world doing the work um, and it's, it's a partnership because it's not based on um, only faith alone mm -hmm. if you're going to work with a spirit that is going to work with you the faith comes after the spirit has proven to you mm -hmm. you know so it is trust first then faith because like a human being when you go and meet a friend we're all human beings here but me and you may not click yeah on the first go you're not going to all you know, like when you meet a woman or something you're not going to date every woman you see because you're not going to click it's the same in the spiritual world it's not every spirit that you're going to go to that is going to be the best for you but that is why people go and you go to elders or you go to spiritualists to introduce you to many but the time that you meet the spirit that is going to work for you you must first doubt this is the role of doubt. Mm -hmm. You're not going to believe because, say, for the sake of belief, because it's not based. It's not a religion that we are going to be using it just for the sake of maintaining a doctrine. No, spirituality that we are practicing is trying to go forward. How are we going to be able to solve problems within our lives? How are we going to be able to develop ourselves? How are we going to be able to be better diviners uh, to help people? So, it is very much based in the pragmatic rather than the doctrine. And so, when you meet a spirit that is going to work with you he or she must prove to you first that it is there. Mm -hmm. And then, after it proves to you, you doubt, and it must repeatedly do so. It's not a, a one-time oh, coincidence that, oh, this happened, so I'm going to know. You must continue, and, and continue, 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 and when it beats and beats and beats and beats, that, then you know it's there. When you know it's there, now you can have faith in them so when there's a problem you know who to go to because you know it's there but that faith does not come before it has proven to you because there are many spirits here but it's not all the spirits that are active mm -hmm. it's the same way you have friends but yeah. it's not all your friends that are your best friends when you're in trouble you don't go to the ones that you are not close to. you go to the ones that you are closest to it doesn't mean all of them are not your friends it doesn't mean all the things that i don't respect them i do but they are the ones that I have the most close relationship to. These are the ones that are active for me. Mm -hmm. Because I have tested them and I know that they are there. They've proven to me time and time again that they are there. I have doubted them and they've said no. <laughs> I've doubted them and they said, and this is, you must. Because if, if you don't doubt them, how do you know which one is, is working and which one is not? Yeah. Um, this is where we will say that we are not, trying, we are not um, religious. Mm -hmm. In the sense that, yes, we may have a common worldview, but our practice and a lot of African spiritual practice is very much rooted in the problem solving, the, the results, the efficacy of what you're doing. Um, it's based on how um, much pragmatic results you're getting. 
So you said that so it's like a partnership, right? Yes. So from the spirits help you progress in life and uh -huh. fix your problems. What do you do for them, them in yeah. return? Uh -huh. So for spirits, spirits can exist. Um, they've been created, but even spirits need sustenance. They can sometimes be in a place, and if they don't get food, they would exist, but they are weak. They can't do anything. They can't work. Um, and so we, through our like love for them, we nourish a love that they love. You know, they love human attention as well. Um, you can do one thing is to do blood sacrifice for them, because the blood we see as the life force of the universe or of life within that animal that's making it alive so it has this energy we call this kind of in nigerian concept they call it ashe and so when you kill an animal the ashe of the animal moves from the animal down to the spirit so it becomes like a battery so something that was there stagnant that couldn't do anything now because you give the blood now it has the power for you to respond it doesn't mean that you do this all, all the time sometimes you can empower them too much you can't control them mm -hmm. But that's why you need to limit them. But it's something that you do from necessity. And when you it's really necessary, then you sacrifice that animal for it. Um, another thing you can do, like for example, I do here, mm. is spirit can really eat anything that you eat. Mm. If you train them that way. Because really, when it's a partnership, it's, sometimes they say it's almost like you're in a relationship with somebody. It's the thought that they like, the thought that you thought about them, or you know that they are there, and you acknowledge their presence. This is what they love the most. And so if you go and you go to Ross Dining Hall, and you see like a cake, um, and you bring it, and then you offer it there for like a day or so, the spirit, the, that physical thing, how, how do they eat it? It's when the thing starts to decompose. Mm -hmm. When it becomes these microorganisms and then it kind of dissipates into the universe, that is what they eat. Mm, okay. So we human beings, we eat the the, the flesh part and then the, the or flesh of this thing, but the spirits, they eat the decomposition. And that's why one of the biggest places that people go and do offerings is at the, at the, the rubbish, because with, uh, or where people throw away stuff, because that's where things are decomposing. That's where they say Legba, who is the guardian of the crossroads, who is right there at the front of the door he is the one who is kind of being the intermediary giving out jobs you know so when we give food or offering to like a spirit you're working with then you you petition it and you say i want you to do this for me or it can also be like i you, you thank you for doing this for me this i'll give you this or you know i just really like you thank you for helping me this and if a spirit is not working, you don't have to give it food. If you are not seeing it, mm -hmm. you don't have to give it food. Um, and there are spirits that you don't feed them, or they are working, but you will not feed them as much, or will not love them as much. Um, but they really like the, the fact that you think about them, and you, um, you love them. That's what they like. And sometimes they get jealous if you have other spirits, and you take care of um, one spirit more than the other, they get jealous. And that's why we say, if you're starting off, it's better for you to have one spirit mm -hmm. and then really build your relationship with it. Test, 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 test. And then ask his or her permission for another spirit to come and then you do. Uh, but different spirits do different things. This is why it's necessary to have um, multiple. multiple spirits, but multiple spirits working in different like areas or elements as well. So like if you want to basically classify spirits, you can classify them into the elements like fire, earth, water, air, um, and normally fire, you know, you can use it for destruction, Those, this, it can be a destructive, but it can also be a protective, so something that has the power to destroy can also create and you can use it to protect. So the fire spirits, that's where they will work. And for example, water spirits, they are more like the female spirits. They are the love spirits, attraction, charisma, those things are there. Um, earth is more for sickness and herbal medicine. These are those spirits. So when you have all these different uh, air, airs to change things, revolution, air can move. Um, 
So those are basic, you know, elements that uh, are the characteristic of many spirits. But some spirits exist in multiple elements at the same time. This is what consider. This is what we call a master spirit, mm -hmm. a spirit that is above. Because the spirits they have ranks, the ones that, and so one that can work in just one element versus one that commands multiple elements. Because maybe somebody maybe created and put them together, or maybe it existed like that before. It doesn't matter about the past really in matters of what it can do today can a spirit evolve like let's say it, it can do one thing and it can reach a stage where it can do multiple different things like it by the spirit itself mm -hmm. it will not evolve i don't think okay based on my experience spirits do not evolve by themselves but man can make spirits evolve by adding more herbs mm -hmm. because the spirits we make them by herbs is specific herbs and so like in our culture our herbs when you go into the, and this i'm sure is the same is the same in uh, in taoism and chinese medicine is that the herbs they have the male and the female the yin and the yang mm -hmm. we too we have the herbs that are male and the female and then we know the herbs that are and which herbs are associated with which element so this herb is what that this herb is fire this herb is herb. we have all and we know them down all mm -hmm. and so when we are creating spirits Really, the spirit exists by itself, but when we put these heads together, you like you force it and make it exist in, into this thing that you made. Mm -hmm. So this thing by itself is not the spirit. The spirit is some energy somewhere. It's like when you have like a mobile a SIM card, AT&T. Yeah. You have AT&T, but AT&T is not here. Yeah. AT&T is there, but you know how to trap it within your SIM card. That is why AT&T is there. This is how spirit is. The spirit itself is not what you made. The spirit exists without form. But you can use the herbs and the natural elements to force it to work within that. And that secret is what the healers know. And this is why you must be taught how to make it. It's not just abstract concept like you are thinking that you are calling a spirit. No. The people who have been there and there are secrets of how to make them and specific ways to make them. And when you make it and you fire it and you, when you make it, it's not just we make it and we think that, oh, it's, it's, it's what, no. You work it and you test it. And you test it and you test it and you test it then you know that it's there that is something you can pass on and when somebody is in trouble you can do so you can also lend your spirit to someone in need oh yes you can you can different spirits different for example if you have spirits that are going to help people when they're sick mm -hmm. yes you will be giving them out but or you will be using sometimes you can you can send your own spirit to go and help somebody mm -hmm. Like here, you can send them and say, oh, this is my mother or my sibling is sick or yeah. something, go and help them. This is how, for example, my father communicates with us. Mm -hmm. You know, the same spirit that he has, we have here. So when he does anything there, he kind of translates it. So he's not here physically, yeah, but, but all the things that he trusts the most, and this I'm not talking of faith, I'm talking of trust, because it's something some of the spirits he worked with for 26 years. And this is and spirits that you don't see their work on like uh, once in a while. Once in a while they do like flying colors, you know, they bam. But you see this on a daily basis. They would be talking to you, though you'll be feeling them physically, uh, moving you. And uh, it's a very fulfilling uh, feeling to be able to be uh, very deeply connected to the universe I think um, and to see them actually working that's for me that's the most fulfilling part of it is to to do something and when you do it your work is successful and you see it on a sometimes it's not perfect you see it but then you get better and you also see that with time your hand becomes more effective it's not only the ritual alone that is important people that's where a lot of people like to make mistake and I think that's where you don't get results. It's not reading it on on a, online alone mm. and then thinking that this is how it is and you, you just make it. No. The person's spiritual development also matters. The same way if you start meditating today, maybe you are not definitely not going to be like somebody who's been meditating for 30 years. The person is there. You're doing the same thing maybe, but the person's level of spiritual development also makes a spirit really work or not work. Yeah, some spirit that I've had for five years, I did, I had them and I tested them, and within my conclusion, I said this spirit is not a spirit, and I didn't use it. But five years later, 
now I've been able to use them and I'm so shocked at how much they are working and I'm, I, I, I look back at myself and I'm saying the ignorance with which I looked at them like they, they didn't exist but it was not that they didn't exist I was not developed enough to be able to use them and I can tell you now that I've now seen the work and I'm like wow especially in my leg by here so it's a, it's a nice feeling it's a, it's a lifelong journey to be able to get them but to at some point you that's when you after you work with them and tested them for so long um, and then you know that they're there and they've helped you in the most critical times then you can have faith then faith and then with that when you add the faith to that that's when they can even work even more you know it complements them but it's not the faith does not start from the beginning it's not just blind faith that is there no like that that's why it's also important to try many spirits until you meet the one that wants to work for you or you do a divination and you, you ask why is uh, which spirit wants to work with me mm -hmm. in my experience those are the ones i found to be the most effective the ones that are really going to are the ones who already are coming to you saying i want to work for you instead of the ones many people get um, caught up in the idea of um, trying to work with a spirit because he has a big name mm -hmm. And the truth is that there are many more spirits than that are classified in human text. Human beings are not the ones that create spirits per se. Some of them exist by themselves before you thought about them. Or you cannot try and quantify something which is inherently unquantifiable into books and order like that. It doesn't. The spirit world doesn't exist like that. And that idea that way of thinking of spiritual world also makes you get caught up in this doctrine like kind of thinking you should live in and know that everywhere around you there are possible spirits you know because you can even use the spirit in the in the in the in the stone in the, mm. in the sea in the tree they are everywhere you just need to know how to work it um, but the person's hand is very important and in our culture we say the person with much ache ache like i said is the energy that and we, we believe that we can possess it. Somebody who has practiced a lot of spiritual work can possess a chair within him. And when we do ritual, we empower our tongue because we say it's the tongue that it used to command the spirit. It's not just the word. But after you say the word, you must have some specific herbs or things you do to your tongue to make it hot. And so we chew alligator pepper. This is why we chew pepper. This is why if you are going to do any ritual, you must... We say we are, we are feeding the tongue, and the powders are even called ache. And when you say ache, it means it must happen. So different bokos have different different aches, but this is what you use to invoke spirit. And depending on the person's uh, spiritual development, when they invoke the spirit, the spirit has to come and it has to work. And this is the difference in, for example, when you throw calories, you know, divination. Mm -hmm. Divination is not a random thing. If there is, um, if you just throw calories and it falls, by all means it's random. Of course it's random. Yeah. Maybe you may say it's not random, but it's, it's very likely that it can be random. This is my belief. But when you have a spirit working for you, and then you have that partnership, this is when you ask the spirit to be in charge of the calories. And you say, please, whatever, whatever spirit, when I throw this, I want you to be the one to be manipulating this for me. Mm -hmm. This is when it does not become random. This is when it does not become random. Because there is something, a force, that you are forced to put behind it. That is, And depending on the level of spiritual development of the person, when you throw it, indeed, it's not, become, it's not random. Like if you compare the way I throw my calories with the way Vikram throw calories, mm -hmm. We throw the same calories, but when we throw, you can clearly see the difference in the way we are throwing. Mm -hmm. 30 seconds left. And uh, Vikram, he can throw it seven times and get no. Me, I can throw the first time, it will be four up. Second one, four up. Four down. So when the more you practice, the more you see how that, what is happening on the outside, in fact, are not really at random. They are things that you can manipulate and you can enforce if you have these spiritual helpers to do that. Um, so it's also important for you to be trained by people who have this high level 
to now build you because pray